it lasts a year. I think I've had it longer than a year, but I don't care. Do you hear me? I don't care. What is up guys? Welcome back. I'm going to make this short and sweet because this is already a years long video. I am decluttering my entire beauty collection. Some of it dates back to 2017. Guys, this is a lot of stuff. This is everything that I own. You are going to see everything that I'm keeping, everything that I'm getting rid of. I'm gonna tell you why, and I'm gonna swatch a lot of it if I think that it's worth it. So if you are into really satisfying slash possibly kind of relaxing, just meditative sorting through things and the satisfaction of seeing what happens at the end, then definitely stay tuned. If you are new to my channel and you want more content like this, let me know down below and maybe consider subscribing while you are here. But without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump into my gigantic beauty declutter. All right guys, first up is foundations. You can see that this is probably my biggest category just because complexion products are sort of the thing that I have the strongest perspective on. Ready? Okay, so I will say that the buildable blur from Thrive is something that I keep on hand for the ad spots that I film for them sometimes. I do really like this, but it has a chemical sunscreen in it. So that means that I can't really wear it every single day. I think that Fairlight is actually my best shade. So I'm going to keep the newer of that one and get rid of the two old ones. The Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. This was an easy win, easy keep for me. The Lawless, what's it called? Uh, woke Up Like This Foundation. You can see it's all separated and it's just because I haven't used this in a really long time. It's a beautiful foundation, but it just doesn't really have a place in my routine as far as like full coverage is concerned. The Saint Cosmetics, Saint Beauty foundations, I'm going to keep my shade in alabaster and give away porcelain because there's no way that's ever going to match my face. I have a handful of the Glossier skin tints here. I have medium, which was the first one that I ever had, G10, and I have light. So I think that G10 is the one that I will hold on to. These two are definitely expired. Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation, as much as I love this, and it actually, even though it doesn't look like it, it's like used all the way down to about right here. Um, it's expired, so I do need to get rid of this one and repurchase that if I want to. Becca Skin Love was my foundation of the year in 2018. I love this so much, but this particular package of it is expired and it's behaving differently, I can tell. Florence by Mills, like a light skin tint. I do really like this, I recommend it, but I have just a lot of other things in my routine that I like better. So I'm going to pass this on to someone who will enjoy it more. The Airy Perez Oat Milk Foundations. I do really like these. If you need a foundation that doesn't have any dimethicone in it, but still behaves really beautifully and dewy on the skin, these are lovely. The only thing is I have to buy it in two shades in order to match my face. And I'm pretty sure that these are expired as well. The Milk Flex foundation stick, one of my more recent favorites, and I love it so, so much. It's so beautiful, definitely holding on to this. The Super Goop Daily Correct CC Cream. This was my foundation of the year for 2019. Obviously going to keep both of these. This is light and fair light, so it's my winter shade and my more kind of summer shade. Zuzu Lux, I don't even know why I still have this. This is definitely the wrong shade for me. So I'm going to pass this one along. This is a really, really easy <laughs> goodbye for me. This is the RMS Uncover Up Cream Foundation. Definitely super disappointing. And uh, I have no reason to, I don't know, I have no reason to keep that. These three products, the Kosa's Tinted Face Oil, Velvet Glow Foundation from Vapor, and the Josie Marin Vibrancy Argan Foundation Fluid. These are all pretty much the same concept. They're just mineral pigments suspended in oil and really only need one. We talked about this in my end of your favorites and Josie Marin is just a little bit too greasy for me. The Velvet Glow is beautiful, but it has a lot of citrus oils in it and the Kosa's ends up being the winner. On Vapor, we have the Atmosphere Soft Focus and the Atmosphere Luminous Foundations. These were ones that were before the rebrand and neither of them really knocked my socks off and they're really pricey. So I'm um, getting rid of these. The Bare Minerals Bare Pro, so good. This is a very recent love of mine. This is Performance Wear Liquid Foundation. I have it in the shade Fair 01 and it is 
one of the best matches that I've ever gotten for my skin. Keeping that, this is probably my most used foundation and I use it more as like a just spot concealing blending kind of thing. But this is the Westman Atelier foundation in Atelier Zero. Absolutely gorgeous. Love almost everything Westman Atelier does. And this is probably my number one. It's so, so beautiful. Keeping that. This I've had since I gosh, was not cruelty free yet. So the Dior face and body, I used this at my wedding uh, for like my chest and my back and stuff like that, just to make sure that everything looked really good in photos. Works great, but you don't have to buy the Dior one. There are plenty of other ones that work just as well that are cruelty free. So going to pass that one on. Let's talk about forgettable skin tints, guys. So I have the Ilia Sheer Vivid Tinted Moisturizer. I have the Lily Lolo BB Cream, the Cover FX Natural Finish Foundation, and the Juice Beauty Stem Cellular CC Cream. These are all super forgettable. Actually, let's go ahead and put the Pretty Booster in there too. These were all foundations that like, I couldn't even keep in my memory. Like right now, I still can't remember how they perform. They're just kind of like super low pigment, kind of oily, performed okay, but like nothing to write home about. Going to pass all these along. Plus the Juice Beauty Stem Cellular is so chock full of essential oils. The crunchy, beautifully flawless, foundation. This is a beautiful foundation. A lot of you guys really recommended that I try it, but I do think that it is way overpriced. And I found out recently that it is because it is an MLM. So no one's going to want to hear about that on my channel anymore. There's no real reason for me to hold on to this. Last few here. The Elate Cosmetics Full Tint. They just sent this to me, guys. I just got a package from Elate Cosmetics that I'm really, really excited to share with you guys. I think I'm going to do like a full face of clean beauty coming up from some brands who have sent me some really, really cool uh, PR packages. This this is such an interesting formula. It's like kind of whipped and it feels like cooling when it goes on the skin. It's so lovely. I cannot wait to show you. So definitely going to hold on to this guy. The Anastasia Luminous Foundation, I found this to just be really, I don't know if it's silicone -y. it's just got too many stabilizers in it. It's just kind of goopy on my skin. And I know some people who would probably appreciate this more. The Smith & Colt Veiled Threat, I absolutely love this. Another beautiful kind of like medium to buildable uh, satin finish foundation. They do a really, really good job with their ingredients. They started out as like a nail polish company, but they do really gorgeous uh, other makeup now too. So loving this. Guys, I know you've been asking me so much to try Mineral Fusion. I bought it a long time ago. I still haven't tried it yet and I feel really bad about it. So I think I'm gonna hold on to this and just make myself use it at least once before I make my mind up about it. And then I have finally the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. I honestly should get rid of this just because it has a chemical sunscreen in it that does irritate my skin, but I just cannot bear to part with it because it is one of the most beautiful formulas that I have ever used in my life. And I just think that it's lovely and I know that I will still get use out of it even if it's not every single day. So that is the status of things, guys. These are the ones that I am keeping. These are the ones that I am getting rid of, giving to friends, in some cases, tossing out. So I'm keeping 13 foundations and I'm getting rid of all of these. I think that that is a really positive move for me considering this is one of the largest parts of my collection. All right, next up we have concealers. You will see some old favorites in here. I don't think I've purged my concealers in at least a year. So this is the Shark Shape Tape. It's what I always call it when I would review it, when I would talk about it or use it on my channel. It's the Tarte Shape Tape. This doesn't serve a purpose for me anymore and it is super expired. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is the corresponding canceled light diffusing concealer from Smith & Colt that I bought when I bought the foundation and I love this so much. It's like a lighter weight version of the Glossier. Speaking of Glossier, I have G11, G10 here. I think I have gotten rid of the old ones. I have been through quite a few of these. However, I am going to hold on to both of these because G10 is so good for covering blemishes in a way that doesn't highlight them. Another thing that I can't live without actually, as much as I just like Pan's Lily Lolo as being forgettable, this Blondie Mineral Concealer. I talk about this here and there, but it is so awesome. If you want high coverage a la the MAC Studio Fix Press Powder or something, but you just want a regular mineral powder, you can use this with just a teeny tiny little brush when you're done doing all of your makeup, like all of the steps, and this will add coverage, and it's amazing. The BioCorrect Concealer from Well People. I have tried so many ways to get this to work, and I just can't get it to work. 
and so I'm getting rid of it. The RMS Uncover Up. I have never liked this. The Saint Cosmetics ones. Again, I'm keeping both of these for the same reason. This one is actually, the porcelain is really good for covering a blemish without highlighting it, and this is really good for highlighting under the eyes. The Liquid Cover Full Coverage Lasting Concealer from Pacifica. What a suck you dry formula. Not a fan. Hourglass. This one's brand new. This is the new one. I have it in the shade Birch, and uh, hmm, she's staying. Cover Effects Power Play, one of my absolute favorite concealers ever. Love it, love it, love it. This is the Clove and Hallow. I could never find my shade in this, you guys. In fact, look, I have two of them. I have 01 and 02. Both of them are too dark for me and too pink. I do not understand this line at all. I don't like the consistency of this concealer and the shades are terrible. So yeah, bye. Ali, the Bye Bye Breakout Full Coverage Treatment Concealer from It Cosmetics. I'm not really sure what's in it. I've never looked into the ingredients because I have not used this in such a long time and it's definitely expired, so goodbye. Note, as I was talking about the Mineral Fusion Foundation, I have never used this concealer and I feel really bad about it. I'm going to make a point to actually try it so that I can tell you guys what I think. This is something that no one liked and it got taken off the shelves. I think I just kept it honestly as like a souvenir. I think it's funny that I have something that like is unavailable, but yeah, it was when Lawless put out a concealer and everyone hated it. So that's gone. This is the Vapor Concealer. It is fine. I'm very unimpressed by it. It just like didn't knock my socks off and it was really expensive. This is the Han concealer. You guys have asked me about this brand before. And again, weird shade matches because this is very pink. And my goodness, is she greasy. So greasy. This is such natural makeup in the worst sense. I mean, it smells so strong. It smells like calamine lotion. Like I smelled that just now and I was instantly transported to being four years old with the chicken pox. It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. This is actually a really greasy formula too and I don't like it. The Ritual Defee that I just tried recently. This is NYX, the Ethereal Veil Conceal and Cover. Such a beautiful freaking concealer, so keeping that. The Ilia True Skin Serum Concealer. For as much as I liked the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation, this is like medium coverage and I was just very unimpressed by it. I never have really liked it. The Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Concealer. I ended up keeping this because it's actually pretty good. <laughs> you have to color correct under it because it's very like flat once you get it on but for certain looks, I do like it and I'm not done thinking about it yet. So I want, I want to keep it. This one I haven't shared with you guys yet. This is the KKW and beautiful packaging. I do love this. And this is a really, really great shade match too. She has a really good shade range. So yeah, this is in the shade two and I'm going to hold on to this because I do want to share this collection with you guys at some point, if you want. The, uh, the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. I can't say enough about this. This was like an instant favorite. It is so amazing. And it's like also $6. Fit Glow. My goodness, does this thing cost a stinking fortune? My gosh, not a bad concealer at all, guys. I just don't get around to using it. And she's also pretty pink and pretty greasy. Look at that. Look how pink that is. Just not impressed. Getting rid of that. Time to move on, guys. We have two left. We have the Bright Concealing Elixir from Anami, and this is the weirdest, the weirdest. I wanna show you how freaking weird that stuff is. It's just this like odd separate -y. It's like there's the pigment and then there's all this oily stuff. It's just a funky, moussey texture. And I've heard some of you guys say that yours doesn't do that. I got a bad one, doesn't matter, I'm done. And then I absolutely love this. This is the Florence by Mills. This was in the end of year favorites for me. This is such a refreshing shade for underneath my eyes. Even if I like combine it with other things, it's so brightening and gorgeous. So that is that for the concealers. I'm keeping those, I'm getting rid of those. I kept 14 and I'm getting rid of 14. That seems appropriate, yeah. Moving on. All right, guys, let's talk about some powders. This looks really interesting. I'll explain that in a second. All right, so this is my current powder situation. The first thing here, this is not open yet, and it is a replacement pan for my Kiarwise powder, so I'm obviously going to keep that. This is what my Kiarwise powder looks like right now. Like I said, you lose so much product to it like bunching up when the brush goes back into the pan with any moisture on it. I've tried to salvage it, but it's really hard. I'm not really sure that I would recommend repurchasing this even though I did a long time ago. It's a beautiful powder, but it's so expensive and this happens, it's just super aggravating. The 100% 
pure bamboo blur powder. Absolutely gorgeous, but do I need it? No. Will I ever use it again? Probably not. Anami. This is one that I just really didn't like at all. It's mostly cornstarch and it granulates my makeup and I'm not a fan. Same goes for the RMS Unpowder. It is entirely 100% silica. I don't know what gives them the right to sell it to us at that price because it's not exactly a uh, proprietary formula. So yeah, goodbye. The Well People Bio Brightener, I just included this because, I mean, I had to put it somewhere. There's nowhere that this technically belongs because it's like not really a highlighter and it's also not really like a setting powder. It's just this really interesting kind of illuminating powder that doesn't really have any shimmer to it. It's awesome and I can't live without it. So I'm keeping that. Vapor, I might as well just like, you know, I got the travel size of this anyway, so <laughs> I don't know. I mean, someone else will really appreciate this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that guy because I've got enough. The Seal the Deal powder from Lawless is another one where I'm just kind of like, eh, you know, it is what it is. I don't feel like her formulas are particularly special. Am I the only one? I don't know. Although this is a really great value for your money. This is a ton of product. This is probably the most cost-effective one in the whole bunch. I have Wouter here and I have it in light medium. I need to order this in the right shade because this is actually the original release of it and it is too dark for me and I actually keep meaning to order my correct shade. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. The Filtered Effects from Thrive. This is one of the best powders ever. It is absolutely bulletproof. It's got vitamin C in it. I mean, you can see it's super well loved. I need a new one. This one's probably expired. I should probably get rid of this and get a new one. Cover effects. I'm almost done with this. You can see like it's literally almost gone. This is my favorite powder, honestly, of 2019. And I probably just should have ordered the big one because I love this so much. Lily Lolo Translucent Silk. I cannot believe how pound for pound expensive this powder is. It is supposed to be like an affordable brand and they gouge you on the amount of product that you actually get for your money. I think that's why I kind of have a bad taste in my mouth about them. However, this is a really, really beautiful powder and I do, if I'm not mistaken, I wanna say there's mica in there and so it does give you this like really pretty sort of like mineral glow. Uh, it's a tough call. I kind of want to give this guy another shot. The new Bite Beauty. I love this very much and it goes very nicely with the foundation that I also love. So I'm keeping this. Ilia, I do really like this. This is really, really good for the days when you are wearing like a cream look and you want to like set it, but you don't want to look mattified. It's so, so good for that. This I used to love. This was the camera powder from Luscious Cosmetics. I don't know what happened to Luscious Cosmetics, um, whether they're only selling in Pakistan now or anything, but they were a really cool company. And back when I had like really, really bad acne, they made the most insane, beautiful skin finish, high coverage foundation I wore it to my wedding. Um, but uh, this is definitely really old, so I'm gonna get rid of this. Boom, the Hourglass Mineral, uh, the Veil Translucent Setting Powder. It's so unbelievably beautiful. I use it like every single time I do my makeup, so. The, oh, the e.l.f., this is really funny. This is the one I chucked across the room because I literally can't get it open. See that? There's like some kind of like leftover cellophane situation over this so it like won't come out. You can see I stuck a ballpoint pen in there. That's why it's black. It, it just made me so mad. I'm probably just gonna pull the lid off of it and try it, but it's literally not even used. Two more here. We have the Too Faced, what is this one called? Oh, <laughs> guy this is the banana cream setting powder and it smells like bananas which we know I'm definitely I've outgrown that at this point and uh, it all just fell out of the pan so it kind of makes my decision for me regardless and then this is the pixie by Petra not impressed I, oh my god the whole place smells like bananas now yeah I mean this is fine I did like a drugstore clean beauty thing this is definitely still a pretty pricey product and you could do better for the money so bye okay so this is where we land these are the powders that I am keeping. These are the ones that I am getting rid of. These I love. Um, I'm not getting rid of them because I don't like them. I'm just decluttering them because they're expired. So 11 that I'm getting rid of, nine that I'm keeping. I like those odds. All right, powder blushes. Who's ready? Jumping right in here. The Cover FX Monochromatic Blush Duo. We talked about this at my end of year. I've definitely give this, given this a really fair shake and it just is too pigmented. I just don't really like it and I'm gonna get rid of it. I have uh, three of the Thrive Cosmo Power Blushes. 
Two of them are in Rosie, one of them is in Angelica, and you can see this older one right here of Rosie has seen a lot of love and she's definitely expired. When I went and filmed some content with them before they gave me a new one of these and so this one's a lot newer. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. I absolutely love this for Nordic Child Running Through the Fjords vibes. When you aren't using a cream blush, this is probably one of the best ones that I've found. It's like a really beautiful iridescent kind of brick red. It's absolutely gorgeous and I love it. The Lily Lolo Tickled Pink here. This is just outrageously iridescent. I don't have time for it. And I do feel like they misrepresent their shades online. Coralista looked like it was going to be a bronzer online, which is why I ordered it, but it is actually a blush and a pretty deep highlight. And I'm not really interested in either of these either. This was such a forgettable video. You guys really wanted me to try this because I don't know, it's sort of like a viral product. It's these little, you know, pods of makeup, these little screw together pans. And they're not bad, but they just also are not like impressive or memorable at all. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna get rid of them because I don't need it. This, talk about a not cost effective way of shopping at the drugstore. Keep in mind when you're shopping at the drugstore, guys, the size of the pans. This is the Pacifica Camellia Just Pressed Blush. This thing was like $13. I ordered it online, I think. And when I got it, I was like, that's the size of an eyeshadow, screw you. So yeah, a lot of times, you know, you end up like, for example, this cover effects right here, extremely cost effective, way more cost effective than this one. I think that, you know, like half the price pound for pound. So keep that stuff in mind, just because something's inexpensive does not mean that it's actually more of a bargain, but they're both gone. So we have some individual pans here. This is Heartthrob from Makeup Geek, and this is Sweetheart from Root Pretty. This one's definitely expired. I mean, there's already been a whole new rebrand recently of Makeup Geek, and um, I'm gonna talk about that in a future Will I Buy It, but we're gonna lose this guy. And this just is super duper shimmery, sparkly, and I don't, I don't love it. Sigma Aura Powder. I've literally never even opened this. When I became a Sigma affiliate a long time ago, I'm not even sure I'm a Sigma affiliate anymore. They sent me two PR packages of the exact same products. And so um, I ended up with two of everything. So I've never opened this, but I know that some of my friends will really appreciate that. Patrick Ta, not only am I keeping this, but I want it in all of his other shades too. I love this because it's sheer. The Love Me Gently Blush from Saint Beauty. I like this, but it is overly pigmented. A lot of you guys said that I should keep trying it. So I think I'll hold on to it because it is just a really pretty rosy color when you need that, but uh, the jury's out. Papaya 1972, as much as I absolutely love this shade value, this is from Kosa's, I love this so much, but I think it's the carmine in it. It gives me little red dots all over my face when I use it, and it's just, ugh, it's a deal breaker. Sorry, Kosa's, I love you guys. I love you guys, I really do. I love everything that they do. I just think that that is a weird, formula thing. RMS. This wants to do the same thing, but I still feel like I haven't gotten like enough love out of it. And I want, I keep forgetting that I even own this. I'm hoping that like by purging a lot of this stuff, I can like remember that I own things. So this is the pressed blush in Lost Angel. And I'm going to hold on to that. This is a very old ColourPop super, super shock cheek. It like, hasn't dried out yet or anything. It's so soft, but I don't even know how long these things last. I've had this for easily two years. It's very, 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 very similar to my new Bare Minerals. Can you see I have a problem? And uh, you know what? I think that the solution is the Bounce and Blur. The Bounce and Blur solves the problem of all three of those because they are all going for the same thing. And then this is where I land. Like that makes me happy. Um, this is the Ambient Lighting Palette in Ghost and um, you'll pry it from my cold dead hands. This is weird. So there was a while back where I ordered a bunch of really expensive skincare and someone else got my package and I got theirs. And when I got theirs, it was this Jouer blush and it's like purple. Maybe when I'm tan, like I don't wanna say no yet because like that's pretty, right? I mean, ignore my nails, those two things clash, but like that's not bad. I just need to try it. And I hate this packaging, it's really ugly. Sorry, no offense. Uh, this is new. This is the KKW by Mario and it's a little much in the coral area and it was a little expensive, honestly, for how little you get. But um, but yeah, I still wanna try this. Um, hi, what? Why is this still here? This is easily three years old. 
It is Milani Luminoso. It doesn't even have the top part of it anymore. You can just reach straight through. Like, girl, you served your purpose, but oh my God, this thing lasts for 24 months. This must have a lot of crazy like preservatives in it. So like, it's not that crazy, I guess, that I still have it. This is such a beautiful blush. This is like a cult favorite for a reason, but it is still too old to have in my collection. Here is Kosa's Contra Chroma, and I'm actually saving this to give to my mom because she looks so good in these kind of like tan blush shades. Wow, I have so many swatches. I literally just have layers of swatches on my fingers right now. That turns rosy on her, and so I wanna give this to her, so I'm gonna hold on to that for her. This is one of my like favorite kind of like cheats. Heartbeat Cheat Color in Exhale from PYT, and it is lavender. And because it's lavender, and it's like a really pale, almost like a chalky lavender, it serves a very similar purpose to the Well People Bio Brightener for me, except for my cheeks. So it like pulls back any like really harsh intensity on blush that I don't want. She says, and this is the shade Hustle. And I thought that this looked beautiful to go with the warm palette. And so I want to try it. I just hadn't opened it yet. Okay, so I'm keeping 12 and I'm getting rid of 11. That's pretty much how I expected things to shake out on blushes. All right, we have cream blushes. The Josie Marin Vibrancy Argan Oil Fresh Paint Palette, Fresh Face Paint Palette. I was so utterly unimpressed by this. These dry up really quickly and they're just kind of nasty and I don't like them. Eighth Muse from Kosas, maybe one of my favorite cream blushes of all time. She says, this is the new one that I just got that they sent me from Elate Cosmetics. This is their Universal Cream in Bliss. And it is like this really gorgeous kind of orangey, gonna be beautiful in the summer. It's absolutely gorgeous. Shantae, you stay. The Westman Atelier, oh my gosh, Open Sesame. There, I actually got it this time. They call this a highlighter. I should have included it in the highlights. For some reason in my brain, I was like, this is technically a blush. No, it is technically a highlight, but it comes off on my skin like a blush or a bronzer or something. I don't know, I like it. It was $75. I'm keeping it basically on the grounds that it was $75, but I still like, I'm not really sure. I definitely wouldn't recommend going and buying it. Very popular from Tata Harper. Ew, ew, yeah, six months, this is expired. We're gonna go ahead and toss her, but I do love this shade. The Vapor blush. I did complain that this thing just didn't really have a whole lot of pigmentation to it. I just broke a chunk off on my hand because I was swatching, but like, look at that. There's just nothing there. A lot of people argued with me in that video. They were like, I think that this was really harsh. And I was like, look, I like what I like. I said what I said. The Westman Atelier. Oh my God, this is the best cream blush in the whole freaking world. I love it so much. This is shade Petal. It's the best color. It's the best formula. I love this blush so much. Speaking of favorites, this is not one. The Olio A Oso Balm Number Two. Look at my arm. Look at my hand. It looks ridiculous. Look at this. You're like, oh, there's nothing there, Kathy. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing there. It doesn't smell very good at all. It smells like old crayons. Um, yeah. Bye. The Florence by Mills. These are two things that are worth comparing. I love both of these, and I will keep both of these. But these two shades are so similar. This is Cruise from Anami. I love this formula so much. But if you want to experience a dupe for it. The Florence by Mills in Gorgeous Gia is pretty stinking close. It's a little bit brickier. This is a little bit more berry, but I love both of them and I'm keeping both of them. Ultimate Nordic Child Running Through the Fjords vibes. We have Haze and Storm Cloud Paints from Glossier and I love them both. Haze is actually, it comes off, even though it's like technically like a fuchsia purple, it almost comes off kind of like pink when you spread it out and Storm, which you would think is gonna be kind of berry, ends up being really, really bricky. And it gives you like what I call hot guy cheeks, <laughs> like a believable flush. And then I also still have Beam, which I think is like a really beautiful backdrop for either of these because it is like this really pretty coral. You can see how that coral goes with that, but it also could be a backdrop for that. Like when they mix together, you get this really gorgeous kind of like deeper rosy color. Uh-huh, the magic in the all oh, mine. Um, okay, we have Olivia from Thrive. This is something that I bought way back in the day and you can see that is really not my shade. 
super duper not my shade. So it reminds me of Puff from Glossier. It's just a little bit too, too pink for me. And it's also super duper sparkly. It's like almost a highlighter. So she's gone. One of you guys asked me, you're like, what products from Thrive don't you like? It was supposed to be kind of like a savage question. This is literally the only product from Thrive that I don't really like is these little sticks. The honest, they sent these to me and they're so beautiful. And it's another thing that like I need to distill my collection down so that I can get back to using things like this because these are so gorgeous. Now this has like a haze of other makeup on top of it, which is why you can't really see the shade. I should like depot them honestly and like put them in a palette. They're so pretty. Juice Beauty. This is actually really gorgeous. It's such a beautiful blush. I still can't like get it out of my head though when Debbie was like, my face eats that. And I was like, I know what it's like to have your face eat blush. And it's so similar, I think, to the Kosa's Ace Eighth Muse. Like, look at that. They're so similar looking. I just am not sure that I need both. All right, we have a couple more from Kosa's. This one is Velvet Melon and this one is Tropic Equinox. As much as I love Tropic Equinox, you can obviously tell I love Tropic Equinox. She's soups expired, like soups expired. She needs to go. This one um, is so beautiful and I really don't own any other like cream blush that's that shade. So uh, yeah, Shantae, you stay. Another thing that this is supposed to last nine months and I've had it definitely over a year. So this is the RMS little guy. And while I did enjoy this, I'm over preciousness like that, where I have to stick my stupid little fingers in there and it looks like kid makeup. Ugh, and it was expensive. Not a fan. Still love this. This is like one of my first clean beauty product, cream cheek kind of things. This is the Ilia in A Fine Romance, the Ilia Cream Cheek. Nordic Child running through the Fjords vibes. Like this was one of the first ones. So uh, it lasts a year. I think I've had it longer than a year, but I don't care. Do you hear me? I don't care. Noto, this was something that I bought to test specifically for my cream cheek video. This is just really red and glossy and I'm not a fan. Lila B just sent me a bunch of stuff. So um, I've tried this a couple of times, such a smooth texture and it's almost a bronzer. So we'll do bronzers next because this will kind of like bridge the gap, but it is called a divine duo lip and cheek. So they're not necessarily saying it's a blush or a bronzer. They're just saying that it's a universal kind of cream product. And this color is so cool. It's like a plummy bronzy shade. And I like it a lot. And it's super pigmented. So as usual, uh, blushes are probably going to be the thing I get rid of the least of. Keeping 15, getting rid of nine. Whatever. Okay, we've got bronzers and cream bronzers and miscellaneous bronzers here because I don't have that many bronzers in my life. Debronzy, anti-pollution sunshine drops. They are more of a miscellaneous category because there's nothing existing on the planet that does the same thing as this and I love it so much. Same goes for the Umbra Tint. It is not only an amazing and effective and beautiful tan looking uh, sunscreen, but also it is a really good primer. So keeping this come summertime. This is the Vita Liberata Body Blur HD Finish. Uh, this is a instant tanning cream for your body. And I used this at my wedding, but I don't need it now because I cannot imagine wearing like body bronzer. So this is the Westman Atelier in Biscuit and it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. It is so beautiful and creamy and a pleasure to interact with and beautiful on the skin. And it's another one where you will just pry it from my cold dead hands. Vita Liberata, the one that tans your face. Um, d d sachet away. Okay, bye. Ere Perez, another one we're opening the cloud door for. It's just so orange, I can't. The Lila B B Sunkissed. So this is interesting because it's the only Lila B product that I've ever like bought and kept. And I don't know what happened to mine. It was like it got coated in something right out of the gate that I used with it. And so it just died. And then they sent me a new one. So I'm interested to see 
if I end up liking it this time. We will get rid of the old one and we will keep the new one. But again, Lila B, as much as I appreciate you guys sending me this stuff, if you're going to make heavy metal packaging, make pans that people can buy to replace it, we don't need to keep throwing these kinds of things away. KKW, this is another one that I have not reviewed yet. It is an interesting little palette because we have a bronzer, we have a contour. So that's a very cool toned contour. They are pretty light in pigment, which is interesting. And then we also have two highlighters in here. This is very much like the only thing in my collection that's like this, that's just a big palette like this with these big luxurious pan sizes to get a brush in all of them. And so far I really like this, even though I think I'll probably use these two more than those two, but that's how it always is with a palette. But yeah, definitely holding on to this. We have a lot of bronzers from Thrive. This is Eos, Rhea, and another Rhea. So you can tell by looking at them that uh, these two, the Rayas, are definitely really loved. This one is from my very first purchase from them, which is why it's covered in crud. It's definitely expired and needs to go. Uh, and we will keep Eos and Rhea. And, oh, pour one out, guys. This is the old Pink Leopard Blushing Bronzer from Too Faced. I did my makeup before this, and so I forgot to include a couple of things. So I have the Lawless right here. This is... Her lighter shade, the uh, Golden Hour, and then this is what ended up replacing this. So you can see this is the RMS right here, and this is the Pink Leopard. The Pink Leopard is still cooler toned and a little less shimmery, and I will always love it. I will always love it, but um, yeah, she's expired, she's discontinued, she needs to go, and these two are my mainstays that I use almost every day, so they stay. We're getting rid of these, we're keeping these. Keeping nine, but it's such a weird category, getting rid of six, so yeah. Okay, next we have highlighters and cream highlighters. The Natasha Denona Super Glow was one of my favorite things ever, and she is now expired, unfortunately. So um, this is beautiful, but like, it's just not as impressive as I once felt that it was. In fact, in fact, I feel like this is doing a better job of what they were going for. Do you see that? This is the new one from Aether. So like, here's the Natasha Denona Super Glow. They just really are like going for the same thing. Holy moly. So yeah, you can see this is the Natasha Denona Super Glow. This is the Aether and Aether is just like this beautiful, like actual wetness on the skin. And it's super, super like creamy. I actually like to apply this with my fingers more, um, but it's almost creamy like to the touch. And so you can totally like apply it with your fingers on top of just about anything and it spreads out and it looks like almost wet. Whereas this is just, I don't know, just kind of flat in comparison. I love the cover effects because it is so like creamy and light touch on the skin. And then this one's just kind of in the middle. I'm gonna get rid of that, gonna keep these two. And then actually, you know, they say that like the, uh, the Aether is really similar to the Fenty. So that's the Fenty, but the Fenty's way glitterier. Look at that. So I don't know, the Fenty's fine. I think someone else will like it more. Lawless, Golden Hour, no, Afternoon Delight is fine. You know, I like it because I bought it, but like, I don't think that it is like a mainstay by any means. This is the only thing that I kept when I ordered a bunch of stuff from Flesh. And I liked it a lot, but it's expired. The Upgrade Highlighter is also expired. This is a really beautiful highlighter. I used it a lot from PYT. Uh, again, we have a couple of iterations here of the Thrive uh, Liberty Highlighter. You can see that this one's pretty much new. And then this one is like really, really super loved because it is uh, super expired and it needs to go. <laughs> And we'll keep this one. This is the other Aether Beauty one. This is the Pink Diamond. It's actually kind of gold. Uh, so it's like a rose gold kind of. So this is what she looks like. And I think any skin tone can wear this, but I think that this is like somebody who's got a, just like a warmer skin tone. Keeping that one. These are two new ones from a brand that I've been in contact on and off with for a while uh, called Venix Organics. They actually started out making lashes. They're awesome. But uh, this is Wedding Ring and K Color. The only thing that's weird about these is they literally smell like fry oil. Makes me feel, and it's probably just grapeseed oil or something that's in the ingredients, but, um, and they're really, really beautiful. They're really creamy and everything. Like they're really pretty, but, uh, but yeah, they, they do, they smell like French fries. But I'll hold on to those, they're brand new and I wanna like understand them better. They have bamboo legs and everything. They're obviously trying to be zero waste, which is really, really cool. And they're organic, 
Gotta love that. Oh, I can't wait to get rid of you, you stupid, stupid product. This is the Liquid Light Serum Highlighter from Ilia. What a dumb product. If you're new to my channel, this is like a prime example of we're gonna sell you something that's liquidy and glittery and you figure out what to do with it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it translates into being actually a good product because it's not. The Living Luminizer from RMS. A beautiful thing, a beautiful thing, truly, but it, uh, it's just too gooey for me. It pushes my makeup around. I like something that's a little bit more lightweight. So uh, not a fan of this and it's definitely expired. This is from Petivore. Petivore sent me this. This is from Connie Beauty, K-A-N-I. Um, the only thing that I find frustrating about this is just how tiny this frigging delivery system is. It's so annoying and it's a little bit gold toned. It's pretty, but I like don't think that I'm going to end up using it very much because it's, it's gold. So not my fave. This is one that like, I wish I could have gotten more use out of. This is the, um, oh my God, never mind. What the hell's going on? Magic Beauty Balm Stick. Literally, Honest Beauty, that's not even, no, there's nothing, that doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything. This is like one of the Westman Atelier things that I just like totally don't understand is this highlighter. They say to use it as a primer. I like don't want to get rid of it because it was so expensive and I still have a good bit of the, eh, it's not that much. I don't know. I've like tried it so many times trying to get it to work. 18 months, she's still way good. So I'm going to hold on to her, um, but don't buy this. It's weird. This is the Joy kind of like rose gold highlight. And actually that's pretty. That highlight is really pretty. This is old, 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 old. I need to throw it out just on, on the grounds of that. As a cream blush, I don't love these, but actually this is a triple threat stick. That's what it was called. But uh, as like a deep skin highlight, that's beautiful. And then finally we have Haloscope. And I don't know where my other Haloscopes are, but this one is really, really, really old and it needs to go. So that's where we land. I am keeping two, four, six, seven highlighters and I'm getting rid of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm getting rid of 11. Are you ready for my shame? I don't know how this happens guys, but the bottom line is I have a lot of, a lot of lip products and I need to get rid of a lot of them. I'm holding onto this. This is the Victoria Beckham one. While this is not an everyday thing for me, it's probably the closest that I'm going to get to wearing a lip color. And it's in a glass package, which I love. This is another one I'm gonna hold on to just because it's brand freaking new and I wanted to experience the KKW nude of it all, but her stuff is all really orange, guys. This is her lip gloss, like I said, that uh, also smells just like fry oil, just like those Venix highlighters. I just need to get over it. And this is really, really pretty. I like wearing this on its own. The Florence by Mills. This is Magnetic Mills, and it was a really, really great nude shade for the lips. I do like it a lot, but it has, I'm serious guys, five minutes of wear time. I don't understand. You say five sentences, you lick your lips, it's gone. The Glossier, all of the Glossier glosses are so incredible. And I don't even have all of them up here because they're like riding around in my bags. They stay. Like this is the closest I'm gonna get to wearing a red lip, guys, is wearing just a cherry red clear gloss. The Fenty Diamond Balm, how long do you last? A year. I've had this. I've had this too long. Ooh, it smells nasty too. Yuck. Patrick Ta, this stays. I'm wearing this right now. I love this so much. This is, she's an influencer. <laughs> Appropriate. This actually, I spoke too soon. These are like the closest that you'll see me get to wearing a, an actual lip color. These are the Generation G lips from, uh, from Glossier. I love them so much. I would recommend them to anyone. All of the Thrive uh, glosses. What are these? What are they called? These are awesome and I'm holding on to these. Uh, the Reviving Topper maybe is what it's called? I don't know, High Shine Reviving Topper? She has really long names for everything. These are so good because they never do that gross white thing on your mouth. They never gum up. Now these guys, okay, so this is the Glossy Lip Mate. I like the Glossy Lip Mates. They are more of like a, a wash, like watercolor wash. And I love that um, when you get into things that are as high pigment as this, that's when I get in trouble because I can't keep that in one place on my face. There's just no way. The other lip color from Thrive, the uh, sorry, the other lip product that they make that, that's in a tube like this is this very 
matte creamy one and I don't like it because I don't like matte creamy anything. Like I don't like something that's gonna dry down on my lips forever. And it's just not my thing. It has nothing to do with Thrive. But that was a good way of showing kind of like what they all look like next to each other. So um, I am gonna get rid of this. This is actually like an empty of oh, the Glossier lip gloss and there are just dead bodies everywhere like this. I, I just absolutely blow through these. Because's wet lip oil. I love this so much. She stays. This is one that I just, it's super forgettable. Another one that I got, like this was a, a Target purchase. And again, like five minutes of wear time. All the buxom glosses need to go because they're super expired. And it sucks because they're beautiful, but I, I mean, I used all of them. I did, I used them all, but they just, there were so many. Okay, Bite Beauty sent out a bunch of stuff. Oh my God, it's everywhere. It's melted all over the place. Um, Halloween, it was still really, really hot here. And so everything melted. Bite sent out a bunch of their sort of like retired shades over uh, over Halloween as like a gag. And it's fun, but I'm getting rid of them. The Honest Beauty like lip creams, again, like they look so beautiful on Jessica Alba, but they don't look very pretty on me. Anytime you put a really opaque lip color on me, it just doesn't look good. This is one of the old Makeup Geek ones that I ordered when I ordered a bunch of stuff from Makeup Geek. And I just tried this on my lips earlier. And it is so like bleached out peach on my face that it just looks bizarre. So weird how personal like nude shades have to be like this. Looks like it's going to be like a dupe for, oh, is it Kava from uh, from Bite Beauty? Like that beautiful kind of like lavender undertone nude. And you put it on, it's like, oh, that's so nice. But then as soon as it adjusts to my skin, it goes um, mismatched concealer kind of like gray on me, you know? It's just weird how like the undertones and the nuance react to each other. So this is uh, ColourPop Tiptoe. This is Humble Pie from uh, from ColourPop. Holy moly, I think that that came with that bright pink eyeshadow that I ordered one time. These might be expired, but I honestly don't even know if they've ever even been used. Um, this was something that I obsessed over for a long time. It's like a powder lip. This was back when I thought that, you know, I was Tati in the sense that she looks so good in hot pink and I just don't, friends. This is one of my favorite formulas of all time. This is the Glossier Vanillic Lip. So look at the difference there. So this is Pony. This looks really, I think this looks really flattering on me. And you can see, even though it is still a slightly like, I mean, it's a similar undertone. It's just a little bit more blushy. Like it just has a tiny bit more of like a rosy thing to it. And it just makes a lot more sense on my face. So holding on to Pony, the only thing there's one, yeah, Casino. I ordered Casino thinking, oh wow, I could just really get away with that with my bright white teeth and everything. Um, no. Oh, the lip caramel from 100% Pure. What a frustrating formula. It reminds me of the Juice Beauty lips in the sense that it just doesn't really want to stay anywhere. A handful of you guys were like, that's so good on you, blah, blah. It was like fluorescent peach on my face and I don't understand why, but it's gotta go. The Lily Lolo lip gloss has absolutely no presence to it whatsoever. It might as well be like water. We have more Glossier Play. We've got Disco Baby, which is like a pinky red. And this is like a very like Taylor Swift red. And I'm keeping both of those that beautiful. Um, okay, the Honest Beauty, these guys, eh, you know, they just, they just didn't make it into rotation. Pretty Balm, I mean, super forgettable. Um, the RMS, yeah. I don't know, what is this? was uh, Monterey, it came in the Savannah Peach collection. And it's really pretty, but I think it's A, expired, and B, like, I don't know. I'm just not gonna wear it. This is Aquila from uh, from Thrive. And uh, while I absolutely love the lipstick formula so much, so much, it's like some of the only lipstick that I'll wear. Aquila is not the shade for me. The shades for me are these two. Oh, no, this is Busy. I'm not sure where, yeah, Busy's not my shade either. Um, I'm not sure where Eileen is. I think it's rolling around in a bag somewhere because I love it so much. Um, but this is Stephanie. This is like my fave, 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 best nude ever, best nude ever, wear it every day. Um, when I'm feeling like really fancy, it goes super well with my lip liner, um, the khaki lip liner, and uh, she stays because she's incredible. So Kosa sent me a bunch of their stuff. Uh, not that long ago and um, some of it melted in the mail and that made me sad because I really enjoy it. So I have Phoenix, which is this beautiful red right here and I'm gonna hold on to that. These also smell really good, like vanilla. 
And then uh, Violet Fury, I love both of these, and I'm going to hold on to those even though I may never wear them again. I don't know, I just like them a lot. But uh, like Undone got smashed, and so did Rosewater, unfortunately. They're both just unusable. Lip balm stain things from, uh, from Honest Beauty. They go weird and white on the corners of my mouth, like instantly. Um, this is from my Sigma PR box, I guess. And so I've never even opened it. And it's uh, a cream, like a, what do they call it? Like a long wear, like liquid lipstick, which I feel like they're falling out of favor and I'm happy about that because I never liked them. This I wore to my wedding. You guys, if you've been here a really long time, you might remember. This is uh, Nui Eju from, uh, from Lancome. Yeah, before I was cruelty free. It's a beautiful shade. I bought this because of Lisa Eldridge. If at least if I'm going to buy something that's not cruelty free, I'm gonna do it because of Lisa Eldridge. Um, but this is super duper, duper, duper expired, so. The Kosa Sport. I want these in clear, but like, how am I supposed to put that on as a lip balm and like, it not just get all over my face? Like, I don't understand these. They're really, really pretty, but like, they're not lip balms. They're not sport, you know? This is a new one from PYT that I have yet to even open yet. And it is a glittery lip gloss. If you guys are like, where's your Tower 28 stuff? It's downstairs. I still haven't brought it upstairs. I use it like, you know, for my everyday life, not really so much on my channel. Ooh, it's minty. That means it's plumping. I think I'm really gonna like this. Okay, this from PYT right here is an absolutely gorgeous color. It is a little like lipstick and this. PYT does this kind of gimmicky thing where everything is double-ended or like has like multiple purposes or like an extra step to it. This just didn't really do it for me. Um, this is the Patrick Ta She's Unapologetic and bought this online. It is another like creamy nude liquid lipstick that it doesn't dry down like to long wear. But like, isn't that crazy that like that from Thrive works so well for me, but this does not, it's too orange. So yeah, I don't know. Ooh. Ooh, it smells nice though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass this along. Uh, Shared Planet, these actually like are super reflective and I don't really like them. And the same goes for this. This I bought back when I was doing my like weird costumey stuff on my channel. So it's a, uh, it's blue y'all and it needs to go. This is everything I'm getting rid of. I'm not gonna bother counting. And this is the only stuff that I'm keeping. Wow, that makes me feel so good. I feel so good. All right, we have Eyeliners, eyebrow products, eye primers, mascaras. We'll make this quick. This is a new one from Elate. I haven't even tried it yet, so I'm keeping that. These are all in the packages because I went to a bunch of events for well people and they handed all of these out. I do not need all of these. This is one also that has never even been opened. Uh, back when I was doing kind of my more costumey stuff, same goes for this uh, colored mascara. This is the Root Pretty. I found this to be very forgettable. I think I've tossed all the other ones that I didn't like. Um, so I have an old one here of the Lash Slick that I need to just throw in the garbage. And then I have a brand new one of the Lash Slick. I do like Lash Slick. It is very much like the Liquid Lash Extensions except lighter weight. Liquid Lash Extensions obviously from Thrive being my favorite. Best mascara in the world. Gonna keep using it obviously. Um, this is another one. This is like a you know, like a blue mascara. No more of that stuff. This is a really old brow product from uh, Luscious Cosmetics that needs to go. I don't know why I still have this stuff. This is a brown liquid liner from NYX that I actually never thought of using actually as an eyeliner. I only used it to like draw on my face with. That can go. Um, I think just for posterity purposes, I'm gonna hold on to the white one though. You guys saw me use it in my last video and every once in a while, you just want a white eyeliner. Let's talk color correctors here real quick. So I have three. I have the, the Becca one that's just really, I don't know, it's really useful. And it's really, really hydrating. The first ingredient is castor oil. I love this for a cream look. And also when my eyes are dry, this is the Charlotte Tilbury one. It's a little bit deeper, um, but it's also really, really effective. I like to use this on a sponge very lightly for more of like a matte look. And then this is the Trish McAvoy one. And I liked it. It was like my first introduction into a really good color cancellation product, but it is outrageously scented, like outrageously, unnecessarily, ridiculously fragranced. And I also think that it's expired, so. All right, uh, boy brow. Obviously, Shantae, you stay in every shade. I don't have black. I shouldn't say every shade. Um, the glossy play color slide dries out really fast. So I'm gonna get rid of her. I have gold eyeliner. I don't know why. Ritual Defee, the black orb. Tried again, using it today, just to do like a little subtle eye look and it just universally disappoints me. So it's gone. 
This is the Josephine Cosmetics. Oh my god, the most gorgeous brown liquid eyeliner you ever saw. And uh, she's staying. We have a couple of Thrive eyeliners here. And we have one in black, one in brown, and one in green. The green does not flatter me at all. And so we keep the black and the brown. I have the Glossier Blau Brow Flick in brown. Keeping that. So uh, this is like my tippy top favorite from uh from victoria beckham beauty oh my god oh my god oh my god it's the best black eyeliner in the whole world i want it in every color this is the liquid eyeliner from thrive and uh it's basically like the mascara so it rinses off the same way and i just prefer this the sigma so much more um i just have more control like that brush is great and everything but i prefer to use the little thrive eyeliner brush in here and it's just a much more like pigmented, easier to control kind of process. This is the Wicked Gel Eyeliner. Thrive Cosmetics Brow Pencil in Audrey. It's a mainstay. It stays. I don't know where my Eye of Horus one is. It's probably some, I don't know where it would be, but I kept that one too. Um, here is my Thrive Brow Fix. I do like this product, but this one's definitely expired. This is Angel Eyes uh, Eye Primer from Luscious Cosmetics. Going to get rid of that because it's definitely expired. Uh, Terra Mare also makes one. I got this from Petivore and uh, I actually really, really like this. This is a really beautiful eye primer. This is the other one that I'm definitely keeping, the Eyelift 360 from, uh, from Thrive. It's just a fantastic for, not just for wear time, but also for getting like really, really great pigmentation out of your eyeshadows. This is one that I've never used from JCAT. I don't know how this even came into my possession. It's not even open yet. And here is the Florence by Mills glittery weird brow product that I just can't get behind so she's gone dun, dun, dun. the brow products I'm getting rid of or eye products and the eye products that I'm keeping all right and finally guys my shame Ugh. all my eyeshadows. There are creams, there are palettes, there are singles in here, and we're going to go one by one, but this is the last step. So uh, I need to be aggressive here and start with things that are expired. So expired Anastasia Beverly Hills. I don't like this formula anyway. I have subculture. Wow, it's like never even been touched. That's such a shame. And then uh, Soft Glam, which has definitely been touched. Yes, those go. We have Volcano Goddess, a palette that ended up being very forgettable. Natasha Denona Safari. This is my favorite palette that I have from her. And so uh, I'm definitely going to hold on to this one of all the Natasha Denona palettes. However, the gold palette just did not entertain me. I thought maybe like three of these shades were really great and the rest of them were weird you know you have like very green golds or blue golds and I just none of it worked for me this is like three years old it needs to go and obviously the pans are all falling out that was the uh the warrior palette by juvia's this is a weird knockoff palette that i ended up with in my possession that's never even been opened this is an elf palette that i just bought this is the hot chocolate eyes uh sugar palette and i do want to try this even though it looks really deep this is a makeup geek palette that i ended up pulling some shades out of but it's pretty but it's just not something that i would want to wear on a regular basis i do really like her formula though this is the urban decay born to run palette it was my palette of the year in 2018 i think it's expired i'm not sure Still, I have better palettes. I don't need to hold on to this. This is new. This is the KKW Artist and Muse Mario collection, and it's beautiful. And I still need to share this with you guys, but it's super beautiful. The Natasha Denona Tropic palette. We had a lot of fun in this one the other day when I was filming my Beauty, Truth, or Dare video, but it's just not a practical palette for every day, and someone else will really love it. The Tati Beauty palette right here. Obviously, she stays as far as practicality is concerned. This is something that I can kind of always come back to, plus these glitters are incomparable. Yes, they fall out quite a bit, but if you are careful with them and you use a good primer or good glitter glue, 
there's just nothing else that's like them. So happy to keep that one. In the same vein though, like of all the shades and everything that I feel like I could get out of that one, I just don't know if this is really worth me keeping it. I I, I just think that the Lawless palette, like it's fine and everything, but I, I mean, of all of my Aether palettes, which I do plan on keeping, I can accomplish anything that's in here with those. And I just, I just like it better. So yeah, this is just something that for whatever reason never made it into heavy rotation. I think it's because there aren't any real like transitional tones in it. There are none of these like really pretty, like almost like lavender shades. Like there's this one that's about it, but I had a really hard time getting any of these to work directly from the pan. They're like too chalky and pigment pigmented, whereas these are creamier and they're just more cooperative. Here's another one. This is the Sigma Warm Neutrals. I have this palette. I've used this palette, but they sent me two. And so I will give this to somebody. It's like completely unopened. This was a, an ill-fated kind of obsession that I had for a minute was trying all of the Melt Cosmetics palettes. This was before they were in Sephora. These are not good formulas in my opinion. I just feel like they're a lot like the Anastasia Beverly Hills formula, which is fine. Some people really love that. Also, some people really like, I didn't know at the time that I wasn't gonna be able to wear like a green look on my eyes. It just doesn't look very good on me. Um, and then this is just super, super like pigmented with no relief at all. Like you need, you need something lighter. They're all the same tonal value. And so these are just impractical palettes for me and I don't like the formula. Thrive, talk about a practical palette. I love this so much. It's probably expired. I probably need an, oh wait. I have another one. Never mind. We'll get rid of this one. I'm gonna keep the newer one. You can tell it's newer by looking at it, but uh, I just love all of these shades. They're so creamy. They're so beautiful. And it is the palette that you can use to back out of any situation. Okay, here's a palette I got like almost no use out of because it's got this like weird green in it and stuff. I don't know. It's another one that's like scented. Ooh, it's like, oh God, it's pina colada scented from uh from Too Faced and it's definitely expired. This, I really enjoy. This is the Shared Planet palette. I, sh I shared this with you guys around Christmas. Such a gorgeous palette, like so beautiful. Can't wait to like condense my collection so that I can get more use out of things like this. The Thrive Little Baby palettes, there are three. And these are called the Focus Eye palettes. They're obviously focused on different color uh, themes. Cool toned, warm tone with the, one of my favorite colors of all time, Gloria, this amazing foiled gold. And then this one's all mattes. This is more of like a fall toned one. I not only love these and I even wear this one, the cool toned one, but also uh, I keep these around because like I said, I do like add spots for them sometimes and I just like to have options. So these all stay and they don't take up much room. Lawless, the little one. You guys are about as unexcited about this as I was. Don't even know. I don't know. I, I don't need that. I will say as far as uh, elf, as far as eyeshadows are concerned, elf makes an amazing $10 eyeshadow palette. This is definitely expired. I need to get rid of it, but um, duh, man, don't sleep on elf for eyeshadow formulas. This is pretty new to me. This is the bare minerals, uh, the bounce and blur. OMG, what a good palette. What a good palette. I use this in my soft glam tutorial, guys. This is such a good little palette. Oh, so easy to sleep on, but definitely go and just touch it when you're in Ulta. It's so, so beautiful. They might have it in Sephora too, but I got mine at Ulta. Gorgeous, absolutely love. One of my favorite things that I bought last year is the Rowan 75 Degrees Warm Palette. So ultra, ultra beautiful actually wear this all the time. I'm going to Europe uh, in the spring and I'm going to probably bring only like this, you know, as far as eyeshadow is concerned. This is just so easy. Oh, one of the bigger fails of the year. This is the RMS weird, what do they call this? Hidden Desire Palette. Well, they hid it from me because I don't desire this palette. It doesn't make any stinking sense. The formulas stink. I just don't like it. The Love Live Florence by Mills palette, absolutely gorgeous, truly. Like I recommend this. I recommend this to you. I don't need it. Someone else is going to like this more than, uh, like appreciate it more than I do. But it, oh my God, it's like a basics palette. Abso-freaking-lutely, such a good little palette. And the formula is great. Um, this I need to try. This is the PYT uh, Warm Eyeshadow palette that I haven't even broken out of its packaging yet, guys. So this is what it looks like 
it is very similar to their previous one except all of the color values have been turned up a warm notch so we can try that i'm gonna hold on to that one all of these color pop shadows are like dried up and stuff again this is when i was in my like adventurous phase Ooh, don't want to throw the baby out with the bath water here so this is the victoria beckham lid luster who makes eye soot oh that's the ritual defeat um this has got to be one of the prettiest oh my god Oh, I don't feel bad about throwing out the Urban Decay because that is like soot on crack. Not soot, smog. This is the Gressa eye tint. One of you guys recently asked me if I'm going to try any more Gressa, and I feel like I have answered this question a million times, but for all the new people, Gressa is almost entirely, especially their complexion products, essential oils, and I'm not interested in putting that on my face. So, um, but this is the eye tint and I found this to be just a very frustrating little formula. Speaking of frustrating formulas, we have the eye soots from Ritual Defeat. And I really, really enjoyed this one actually, like as far as the shade is concerned, this is uh, golden age, but aura I could have really done without. So I think I'll get rid of aura and keep golden age. So this is weird. This was, I posted this on my Instagram, but like I was sent these from a brand called Millet Pepper that has like a hundred subscribe or a hundred followers on Instagram. I don't understand like why they sent me this or who they are, like what the brand is. They're straight out of China, which means that I have absolutely no idea what the materials were that were used in these shadows. I have no idea who this company is. They're obviously not going to be cruelty free if they're in China. So as gorgeous as those shades are, I cannot in good conscience put them on my body or anyone else that I know because I know nothing about this brand and I know nothing about their manufacturing practices. It is such a shame. All right, we have the Glossier Lid Stars. Holding on to these four, we have Moon, Fawn, Slip, and Cub. I love these. The very light purple lily and the green herb, I could really do without. They're just not going to ever probably be on my face. And these guys, they make me so sad because if I were to dump this out, it would go everywhere. These are the Kosas 10 second eyeshadows and they just did not work for me. I don't like them. These are these little elf guys that I bought. They're sort of supposed to be like the magnificent metals. I think I'm going to hold on to these so that I can do just like a full face of elf, but I don't anticipate like keeping those. Why is this here? I think I meant to include this in my, uh, <laughs> my highlighters. I'm going to hold on to this guy. It's very pretty from Ritual Defeat and Solaris. We have the Brilliant Eye Brighteners from Thrive, which I'm obviously holding on to. They are like mainstays in my routine. So this is Stella, Aurora, and Mako. Miko. Um, the RMS Beauty, whatever the heck this freaking little thing is. Oh, it's going to break off right now. It's completely dried up. I haven't even had it for like a year. This is the Peach Molt Eye Tasker, and there's no point in having any kind of eye liner in that color. It doesn't make any sense. This is uh, the Glossier Play. I think that the other ones are up on my desk because I used them in that video, but this is the Bijou Bijou Glitter Gelée. I'm going horse, and this is also, I want to say, Bijou Bijou. Uh, they say it to me by accident and so I have a completely unopened one that someone will really appreciate but I'm gonna hold on to this I know that everybody has this like criticism about uh non-biodegradable glitter but I think what would be even worse would be for me to throw that out you know not gonna do it last few here the Ilio we talked about this this is just a really lousy little eyeshadow crayon. I think that it is greasy and annoying and it creases instantly. This is the Armas Beauty, what do they call this? A Swift Shadow. This came also in my uh, Savannah Peach collection. This is Savannah Sunset and it's very, very pretty. It's very, very pretty, but do I need it? Not really. And then the final, final guys, this was like my freaking collection of the year. So you guys know how I feel about that. Go away, Siri. Shut up. Interrupted me. Rude. Uh, this little eye brick from Victoria Beckham Beauty is pretty much one of my favorite things that I bought last year. So all of the eyeshadows, guys, this is what's staying. This uh, is what's going along with all of the color pop shadows that don't even fit in the box. So. Well, guys, uh, no sooner did I declutter all of that stuff and go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to have no more stuff, you know, like everything, no, nothing else in the door. But do I get this huge box? There's more of it downstairs. All the new stuff from Bite Beauty. In fact, I, 
I got three shades of the foundation. I got both of the primers. We're gonna have to do a giveaway. And look at all these lips, guys. This is what I'm wearing on my lips right now. This one's sugarcane. And I'm wearing it with my khaki lip liner from Thrive. And I'm already obsessed. So there will be more declutters in the future, guys, because the makeup just keeps coming in the door. Do not worry, but I wanna show you what the final result is of everything. All right, guys, so here is my current filming setup. This is the background that I just built. And then we go over here to my current collection. So it is very condensed. <laughs> all of my foundations fit up here. In this drawer right here, I have all of my mascaras and some highlighters and just a little bit of miscellany that didn't fit anywhere else. All of my brilliant eye brighteners are back here. I have my eyeliners and my lip liners and my like brush cleaners and my setting sprays and my brushes and things like that. There is a whole nother box of brushes over there and all of these need to be cleaned as well. That'll be a whole nother declutter, but tools don't take up as much room as product. Moving down here, we have Kiki's palette, which is just a mainstay and doesn't need to really go in a drawer. All of these are my concealers and my color correctors. So this is all that I ended up with. Here is where all of the lips ended up. So we have glosses and colors and things like that. I think, I think the ones that I choose to keep from Bite will, uh, will fit in here also. All of my powders fit in this little drawer right here, including the unopened Kiara Wise one. So this is super convenient. I just have to remember to put everything back when I'm done so it's not just like everywhere. Right here, I have my cream blushes and then I have my cream highlights as well as my primers. And then I just have two bins. I used to have like five of these. So this one is all of my highlighters and my blushes and my bronzers that happen to be like powder. And then here is, as you can see, all of my eyeshadows. So palettes, creams, liquids, everything. And then this, again, is just how it all looks. That's literally my entire makeup collection and it feels so good. Also, look at that. That's so cute. My little award for my khaki lip liner. Oh, one of my favorite days of my life. So that is it guys. That is my declutter. That is my collection right there where I can refer to it as I need to and it just all fits in my brain now. Even doing my makeup today, since I actually did the declutter proper yesterday, I used so many things today that I had been meaning to use and just like forgot that they existed. I used that Jouer blush palette and I'm obsessed with it. It's so beautiful. So just goes to show like cleaning out and decluttering your collection can clean out and declutter your brain. I'm excited to be back in this space again. If you guys remember a few videos ago, I said that my beauty room had become kind of a toxic place and now I'm feeling so much more creative and excited. So if you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you want more declutter content from me, because girl, we got some other things in my house. This isn't the only room in my house. We got a closet, we got a kitchen, we got the under the sinks in my bathroom and that kind of stuff that we can declutter. Let me know in the comments below because this was so satisfying for me. And again, if this is your first video of mine that you are watching and you enjoyed it, we do focus mainly on like actually testing makeup here on my channel, but there will be future declutters. I am decluttering my life right now. So definitely subscribe while you're here. Ring the little notification bell so that you know when I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me today. I love you so much. I love you so much. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.